Howdy, beautiful Bart here, and welcome. Going to be a short stream for this Monday. Um, just going to go over what's been going on and what's up with the projects that I've got going on, and yeah, whatever. So, had a project that I was working on. Got motivated on it, started doing a bunch of different things with it, and got a lot accomplished in a short amount of time. And as I was going through deleting projects, um, it got deleted by accident. And I started on it again, didn't like where I was going, so got rid of it and started over again, then started over again, started over again. And this is going back to a project that um, I initially started over a year ago and have deleted probably about 30 times. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just haven't been excited towards the progress of what I was trying to do with it and I know where I'm trying to go with it. I've got my goals and my everything set up. But then I get sidetracked on other projects and helping other people and so forth. And my project just gets shoved to the side and forgotten about. Um, this, keep in mind, is a very short amount of, of time of work on this. Um, have not been spending much time in front of the computer. Uh, between the weather, this office that I'm using is poorly heated and air conditioned so in the summertime it gets really hot and right now it's winter time so it's um it gets kind of chilly and it's going to be in the 20s tonight so i'm not going to be spending a hell of a lot of time in here tonight i'm going to do this and move right along and i do need to get some testers to check a few things out uh, i'm going to go ahead and hit play here and stop we'll do it in the standalone so we can see about what it looks like. I'll probably upload another version of this. So whenever I do get another tester, um, it says go connect to Steam, dummy. And it's because I restarted. And why the hell are you there? Ugh, never mind. So yeah, I had to restart. So Steam got turned off for some reason and did not restart. So as you can see, what happens whenever you don't have Steam turned on with uh, my template, it tells you go connect to Steam, dummy. Come on. I don't give a fuck about your news and I have not changed anything on my fucking email address. Thank you for showing that to me. And thank you for a zero byte download on Subnautica. Anyway, go the hell away. So, as with usual with my simple multiplier steam template that I talk about all the freaking time, it works. It works all the time, every time. Unless you screw it up. Or forget to connect to Steam. You can see you got the Steam shit right here, Steam username and avatar here, the usual stuff. Now, if you go into single player, what will happen is it bypasses the, the the multiplayer portion of it. So as you can see, my character is still the default white character. Got Loft, which is up there. And yes, this is definitely not much. If you take a look at it, it's just four rooms. That would be the lobby. Room one. Room one is earmarked for a PvP area. And you've got room three and two over here. Each of the rooms have a teleport system in it. So if you go into room two, you go to room two. And if you want to go to room three, you go to room three. Now if you go to room one, it puts you in PvP mode and your match changes so now you're red so you know that you're in pvp mode later on it'll be team bay so you know whatever you want to change modes whatnot you can have uh, red team versus blue team right now it's just going to change your mesh and then whenever you go back to the lobby or any other room it will return you back to your original white character and that's in single player so let's go back to the main menu go into multiplayer host what's up bud so when you actually go into and you're the host 
As the host, your character will be yellow. You are the administrator for the the game. And if you hit T, currently right now, this is still under construction. For It'll show the number of players that are in here. Hit scan. Well, I'm the only person here, so it's only going to find me. But it'll show a list of the players that are in the server. And I'll have it set up to... Um, if I wanted to, I can hit another button here and say if Lexmark's there um, was in the server with me and I wanted to make him a moderator, I could click on moderator button and turn him into a moderator. And then his skin would turn blue. You didn't create Unreal Junkies. Unreal Junkies has already been there. It's already been a used a name and we don't advertise other things besides my stuff and my channel. So you can see, I'll have to keep working on it. See, it it'll it doesn't clear automatically. But whenever you hit scan, it's going to do a search, find anybody who is here on the server. And right now, that's set to bind the T key. Like I said, you can actually um, promote somebody, demote somebody. I'll have various different functions that can be done. Again, this is a total work in progress. I'm sure I'll have to make it go full screen or larger so that I can encompass all the different things that are going to be in here for the administrator. No, you don't... You could have told me that in my Discord channel. So, the, um... The ability to have access to these players. And the way it saves it is it saves it into the game instance so that as long as you're in here then it will get saved. Um, I may decide to do something later to change things around. Right now this is still small scale and a lot needs to be done. So now since I am the, the host and my character is yellow instead of white, if I go into the combat arena, I still can go in here, perform combat, do whatever, and then whenever I leave I get put back in my original yellow so if I was not the host, anybody else that joins, their characters will be white still. And if you see the yellow character moving around, that person is the host. And it persists through all the different rooms and so forth. Said so Even if you go into combat, you're going to go to your red character, but whenever you go back, say for instance, go to room 1, put myself in combat, and I'll go to room 3, no matter what, whenever you, you go into that combat arena, everybody's against everybody. And you see... And that is based on whether or not, you know, since I am the host, my character will be yellow. So, if I hit escape, go back to the main menu, and again, if I were to go back into single player... Looks like i got to address that. Um, because it, it saved it, I need to clear that out. So, take a look at that really quickly. Because I saved that to the game instance, primary GI, the admin mesh is going to be the yellow mesh, and is admin is false by default, and that should have not carried over. So let me take a look really quickly here. And I want to show all my goodies in here. But is player admin... Setting the admin mesh... Should be false by default, and it is. But since I saved it to the game instance... This is why I need to get someone who is going to be able to, to test this in multiplayer with me to, to bounce back and forth and to try things out like this. Not having an active test team right now does slow things down. So I guess what I need to do is whenever I select to return to the main menu, let's go to widget and go to escape menu. 
essentially it's main menu and resume game. So what I can do, I guess, is whenever I select to open level to go into the main menu. Um, I don't know why that's in here. I don't need that in here. Because that's in the main menu already to destroy a session. So what I need to do is I need to cast to player underscore base, which is my player character. Um, get player character. I'll just go ahead and spit it out. I'm trying to fix a problem here. Probably need to cast to the game instance. Yeah, let's do that. Let's um cast to player underscore actually you know player I don't know why, but it does not want to let me go to the the, the game instance sometime. Yes, I did, uh, and I actually posted on my Discord channel f about it for everybody to go see, and I went out there and watched it go through its full phase into the blood moon. Primary. Psh, no wonder. Being a dumbass. Um, because the project I was working on to test this out, I called it Player Game Instance. Cast to Primary game instance because whenever I go back to the main menu I need to reset my character so he's no longer an admin get game instance and inside that game instance which was drew right there set is admin to false So that should clear that problem out. Alright, let's see if that fixes anything. Alright, so we hit play. Play it in standalone. Anybody guess what tonight's drink of choice is? Get three guesses. We'll go into single player. And we can see our player is white. We are not an admin. We are not yellow. We'll go to main menu. Go to multiplayer. Go to host. Mecha game. We are. Let's go up to the loft. And yes, I had to put sitting down on the chair. Yes, it's replicated. Yes, it works. So, okay, we are the admin. We go into room one. Let's go back to the lobby. Everything is good. Let's go back to the main menu. Let's go to single player. Yay, we're back to white again. So, white, we should turn red here. And we should turn white again. Go to main menu. Multiplayer, host. We are yellow. We go here, we'll turn red. Go back into the lobby, we'll turn yellow again. All right, that works. All right, Lex. You brought me good luck to, to find a problem that I could fix quick. So I'll just sit down and have a seat. So everything seems to be working. I just need to get in here and test this out with somebody else and ensure that they're not going to be yellow. I mean, I can't very well do this in two-player because I have to play it in standalone to get the multiplayer portion of it to work correctly. So there's no way I can test this on my own. I mean, if I come over here and do new pie window, 
do it that way you can see it does not pick up the online but even if I try it with two players new pie window and get two different windows here and I'm gonna be host and I'll the multiplayer and find give it a second see if it finds it no it doesn't so let's find it again we'll do a search and it should find it now there it is a 22 millisecond ping but as you can see the client does not see the I'm, this is the client here client does not see that the server is yellow the server sees the client is yellow so let's take the client put him in PvP mode and now if we come over here with the server I'm actually going to look down on the player go upstairs and just look down he is red come over here I turn red I stay yellow because the server is supposed to be yellow but the client is not supposed to be so I don't know if this is because and you can see the server on the left there sees the client as being yellow as well everybody sees everybody as yellow and he stayed red so I it messes up everything when I try to go into a multiplayer mode going this way I don't know why but it screws up everything all right well we'll see you later bud so he's supposed to be white in here and it's going to give you an error um, that's just natural because it's trying to find the same information from the same steam client so I won't be able to test this effectively by myself but I know that um, damn it I come in here and play in standalone game I can't play standalone game it's still it's the same Steam account so it's gonna be screwy back and forth because it's set up for a Steam architecture like I said if I come in here in single player you can see the player is white it doesn't do the the host slash server client thing so I turn red in the combat arena and when I leave I go back into a normal mode let's go back to the lobby but now if I go to main menu multiplayer host create a game yellow because I am the host and if I go into the combat room then I turn red leave the combat room and go back to yellow again so I'll double check all my stuff make sure everything else looks good um, see if there's anything else I need to do on the client server portion of verifying these the players color um, and then try to get someone to test with me and then once I get it tested then um, I'll post another version of it online but there's no combat yet I'm not worried about combat that's one of the least things on my mind is actually getting combat work I, I know I can take health away I know I can do explosions and guns and all that stuff I can do an animation you know setting them up for different stuff yeah whatever that can be done but I want to get the other core stuff taken care of first the the lobby portion of the stuff which is walking around which is sitting in a chair teleporting to different areas going to different portions of the map the loft this is all temporary placeholder stuff for a map wise just to kind of get the point across um, once I settle in and get uh, this portion where I'm happy with it then I'll go back through and I'll start working on the next part which might be a vendor or it might be something else I'm just gonna pick one feature and iron through it get it working correctly like I said with the um, the host being the admin be able to do a scan find a list of players that are in here in the server and then you know except this uh, might go full screen or whatever else but then be able to like say if I want this beefalo Bart weirdo if I want him to be a moderator I can click on a button here and it will then 
change their mesh over to blue so everybody around will know that that person is a moderator. Yellow is an admin, blue is a moderator, red is a combat, and white is just a normal person. Just identifiers for right now. Not worried about doing character creations or any of that fancy stuff just yet. I want to get the other things done. I want to get some functionality on this because I don't have a clue what the hell I'm doing. It's nice to be able to go through and do this kind of stuff and be able to pull up an admin menu and scan for the, the name of the players that are in here and then be able to promote them so that the host acts like, well, for right now, will be the, the leader of the server. At some point, this will go over and become a, um, a dedicated server. You'll still have admins, you'll still have moderators, and you'll still have normal players. But uh, I want to look into trying to do some form of whitelist. Uh, setting up Steam functionality where it's getting um, privilege, privilege levels from Steam. And I've started looking at some of the, um, the stuff you can do with Steam. I haven't found any good tutorials at all on Steam advanced sessions and stuff like that. You can see i got to clean up a lot of stuff too. But I just have not found a whole lot of good tutorials on anything Steam-wise. So as I'm figuring out things, I want to be able to, to share with, with other people. But you just type in Steam and scroll through the list. Gamepad events, I don't care. Steam events. Advanced friends, Steam API. Get friend to Steam level, get friend avatar. Um, game played, persona name. Uh, friend info, workshop information. Uh, Steam groups, group officer list. Look into that a little bit more as well. Um, But besides Steam, you also have online, and you start looking through here, like get unique net ID, or um, get player name, set player name. So if you want to change a player's name, you could do it that way, I would assume. And it's based on the controller number, player controller. The normal, whenever you're, you're doing get player controller, you're referring to zero, which usually is a, you know, the normal player, but what if there's 10 people in here? You're going to have player controller 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So you're going to have to get that information and be able to change that information. Get session settings, session state. I have not been able to get a whole lot of usable, usable stuff from those. Um, and then you've got the uh, sessions. Well, like I said, there's all kind of stuff you can scroll through, and I'm just going through and grabbing these things and just screwing with them and, and trying to test outputs on them. Get max players, current players, ping in milliseconds, server name. I can't always get it to, to pull that information up. So, trying to figure this out a little bit at a time. Um, you can also type in session. And like session, create session, destroy session, find sessions. Uh, I'm just going through and I'm grabbing some of these things and I'm trying to pull what information I can and trying to figure it out as I go along just because I can't find any good tutorials on it. And since I can't find anybody else that'll show me how to do the shit, I'll just figure it out on my own. So I need to spend some time going through here and getting everything organized because this is like um, setting the, the admins mesh the combat mesh, neutral mesh um, sitting your butt down in a chair so I mean I need to come in here like this is all for sitting so I plan on at some point sitting, if you're not in front of a chair and you still want to sit down, I'll set it up to if you're not in combat mode, you can just sit on the freaking ground. Um, T, this is the admin window. 
admin menu. And I said all this was the mesh stuff. And I'll go through, I'll color coordinate everything. And if you don't know how to color coordinate things or why it's necessary, um, touch input. This is going to be an input. So I can come over here and assign it yellow. So now I can come over here and I know that anything that I see that's yellow is going to be an input. And it's gamepad input, so that's yellow. VR, I don't even know why I've kept that in there, but whatever. Movement. Now, this actually has um, a transparent also. That's why you don't see anything in the background of that. And we'll do that as well. Or from just being dumb and can. Nah. I have to deselect that box every freaking time. Actually, let's make that one red. It's an admin check. And. Admin menu. I'll make that one red as well for now. But. You can do it that way. Say so yellow if you just wanted it to be this, you set it to one. Probably better off that this way. So these were the uh the colors that I used for the mannequin. I like it a little bit better like that. Makes it easier to kind of see what you're doing, to know what's where, and having color coordination does not only extend to this part, and I guess I'll show that here in just a second. Go back through and get these last couple ones. You can actually go in and color coordinate your folders in your main selection. Alright, last one. Compost, save, get out my view. So, as you're looking at this stuff right here, you look at these, and this is just bland, it's just normal. Average, whatever. So, let's say you want assets to be green. You can right click on this and set color. I'm going to make this like so. So I've just added a color. Now I know that my assets are going to be there and I want my characters to be blue. Set color and I'm giving it a new color. And let's make it zero, zero, one. Okay. Maps, uh, whatever. UI, let's make it red. Set color. And it saves those colors. Now you can quickly go back to them whenever you want to. So I'm going to get a new color here. And we're going to do one, zero, and zero. Got a perfect little red. And now you can kind of breathe a little bit of life into your stuff here. Uh, where's that UI folder? There it is. Bang, you can go right into it. So you can label your your folders in different colors. That way, whenever you're trying to get your brain trained in on what you're doing, you can kind of whittle your way back into it. Um, what do you want for maps? So, yeah, screw it. Let's um, give it that yellow color. You want a decent yellow? Um, 
I do uh, point seventy five on red and green, zero on blue. And that works out pretty good for a yellow color. So I don't use geometry and mannequin very often. So they're not as flashy color wise, but if you wanted to you can get them whatever color you want. And the same thing for subfolders. When you're looking inside here, gadgets, well, you know it's gonna be that color and materials. We can set that to you know these same colors. Make up new colors if you want to. But if I know that I'm going to my gadgets folder and go to assets, just go to the green one and bang, go from there. Same thing with characters. I'm going to be using animations and blueprints more than anything. So I could set my animations to red, blueprints, well, blue, so blueprints. There we go. Again, not worried about those guys. Don't have to worry about that. UI. Primarily, what I'm going to be going into is this folder right here. So, hot. It's hot. That's where I'm going the most. Rest of them, I'm not going to use that much. So, I can look right there. UI, widgets, bang, go from there. It's a trivial little thing. But if you're trying to get yourself to where you're working faster and faster and faster and working on your speed of your content of what you're creating, then trying to get organized. Same thing when you go into your maps. Go into your test map here and you look, I've got a map shit folder and walls, rooms. I come over here and finish organizing. Well, this is going to be for rooms rooms so I can just put those in there chairs I don't have one for the chairs that's something that I just put in here so furniture so I'll grab that stuff show that in the furniture folder and good ah, teleport teleport well those need to go in teleports Text renders need to go into text. So, getting your maps clean and organized. So, if I want to look for my teleports, bang, right there. If I want to look at my starts, they're right there. I've only got two player starts. Rooms, no problem. Let's put those in here. So, I got every, you can put folders, you can put subfolders inside your folders. Um, yeah. The more organized you get, the better you're going to be. And I'm a disorganized as hell most of the time anyway, so. So a quick run through of where I'm at right now on this short amount of time for throwing this build back together again. Um, it's currently set up to where, which we need to go back and exit. We need to start from the main menu map. So, when you first start the, uh, the game itself, ignore the names, temporary names. Go into single player, you can see you got your multiplayer for your Steam stuff, but going in here, my character's white. Okay, no problem. Come over here, have a seat. Just temporary little cheesy model for the chair. But if I want to go into combat mode, I would go to room one go do my combat stuff. I leave here. I can go to any other room and it puts me back into the white color. No problem. Everything's good to go. And go to the loft. Go over here. Sit down up top. Chill out in the loft. Watch TV. Whatever else. Come over here. Look down. Check out what's going on. I did have some TVs in here where they were actually viewing the lobby and other rooms and stuff but I took those out. Um, they weren't as important for right now. I have other things I need to worry about. But instead of single player, so you want to go into multiplayer, and if you are the host, your character color is yellow. You are now the host. And what else comes in, they're going to be white. You decide you want to go play and do some combat, no problem. You go into combat mode. When you leave to go back to whatever room, you go back as your yellow color because you are the host. 
since you are the host, you have access to a host only or admin only menu. You can do a scan, see who's here, and it'll show a list of the players who are currently in the match. So right now it's just going to do that, and I don't have it to where it resets yet, but um, if you want it to reset, you exit, open back up, scan again. But what I'll have eventually is where if I want to promote this Beefalo Bart guy, which is me, but if I want to promote him to a moderator, as soon as I click that button, it'll automatically change that player's color to blue, because now he is a moderator, he's going to have a different color. Later down the line, see, this is changing skeletal meshes right now. Um, I've created skeletal meshes for yellow, for white, and for red, and I'll do another one for blue. But I want to have this set up to where, with this, I can then promote that player, or kick that player, or what have you, or demote, have stuff that I can do with that player. Um, and it'll show the active number of players that are, is on the server there. Um, still go back to the main menu, but then if I go back in here, I'm like, okay, screw it, I'm going to go back into single player. And I'll play with myself. Oh, no. You go back to just being white. Now, to create a new mesh, you know, my characters, materials, I got yellow and red. Then in meshes, I've got the admin mesh and a combat mesh. So what I'll do here is I will take this combat mesh and I will duplicate and we'll call this SK mod moderator. Okay, then I go back to my materials and I will go with the combat logo. I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to call this M underscore mod logo. I'm going to go into it, go to the color, and I'm going to create my own zero, zero, one and I'm going to drag this up here and OK I'll hit save close there and do the same thing for the body I'm going to duplicate that red body and I'm just going to call it M underscore mod underscore body now when I go into this one I'm going to want to scroll all the way over in here because there's a lot of stuff in here to body color, select the default value, select my blue, select OK. Hurry up and get by your shaders here, monkey boy. Because now when I hit save, it's going to apply it and save it all at the same time. So hurry up. Hurry up. Are you there yet? How about now? So save, let it do its thing. It's going to apply it. So as soon as I close that out, Come on, you can do it. All right, we got our materials. We go back to our mesh and go to the material slots, body, and logo. Save, and we are done. So now we got admin, combat, moderator. And of course, still using the default, which is going to be in here for the default uh, mannequin skeleton and his materials to go with him. So let's be, quickly create uh, new materials and meshes for a whole new. So if I'm actually going to say, if you're the admin, you have this character, your skeletal mesh. But the moderator has a different skeletal mesh, and normal players have another. And then if you want to do something similar to like, say, okay, well this person's got a premium account, their character is going to be this skeletal mesh. You can change your skeletal meshes based on that, and the way that I've done it here in the blueprint, the default is that white color, but... Right here, mesh. Um, on startup, 
you're going to create your player HUD and you're going to set it to the viewport, make sure your mouse cursor is gone. It's going to run an, an admin check as well. Off of the event begin play, it's going to run all this stuff up here. So it's going to do the admin check and it's going to see, it check from the game instance to see if you are the admin. What happens when you host the game, It when you select it there, it automatically saves that to your game instance. So now it pulls that information back up. And I may have changed that, but it seems to kind of work, but I, I need to test it with somebody to verify. And if you are the admin, then set is player admin to true, and then it sets the, uh, the admin mesh. And just as a failsafe, if you are not an admin, it goes to the original white color. And I've got some multiplayer replication on that. Same thing with um, setting the combat mesh. If you go into the arena or the the PvP room or combat room, then it sets you in combat mode, changes your mesh to red, and whenever you're done, it sets you back to the white character again. Unless you are an admin, then it puts you back as the white character. I don't have to come back over here as well and ask are you a moderator and things like that. You just kind of break it down later. But for now, that's working. Sitting down with its replication, it's working. But I needed to spend some quality time with a tester and just kind of run through some things. Sad part of it is I'm going to have to package this and I'm going to set this to package now. The saved version, I'm going to go ahead and I know you can't see what I'm doing because I'm on a different monitor. This is... Dream Party. So I'm just going to delete the old stuff, the old version. I'm going to save this version. So all I'm going to do is go to File, Package Project, Windows 64-bit. It's going to ask for the folder. It's the correct one. I want to hit Save, and I'm going to watch the output log. This won't take very long because I don't have a whole lot in here. That's why I went back to no assets in here right now. No starter content, nothing special. I wanted to just have the bare bones. That's why instead of using starter content, hey, you got a chair in there, no problem. I just made a quick down and dirty chair that I can throw in there and be done with it. Keep everything as minimal as possible while I'm testing core features. And then, as needed, I can throw in like the um, Cindy Studio assets or whatever I want. Which would more than likely be what I'll do for now is use Cindy Studio Assets because I've got them all and they get the job done quite well. Okay, we got some green. Silent equals true. Hmm, okay. Why is that a thing for SK underscore moderator? It's not being used by anything. So I don't know why that shows green. As soon as it, this gets done packaging, then what I'm going to do is go ahead and zip it up. And as soon as I close out on the stream, which, you know, it's going to run through and play it one time to verify everything in the packaged version. Then we'll pack it up in a RAR file and I'm going to send that to Google Drive and have the link available within 20 minutes for someone to be able to test with me. Just let me know on Discord. Even though it shows I'm offline right now, I'm still there. Sometimes when I'm, on, I'm here, it'll say that I'm offline. Sometimes it'll say that I'm online, but I'm not. So you can't always judge my presence on Discord. If you have questions, just ask them. That's the best way to do it. I mean, seriously, you know, sometimes if I am here and it shows that I'm not here and I just don't feel like answering, it's not because I don't want to answer. It's because I just don't want to answer. <laughs> sometimes I just don't feel like doing anything. Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Stop.
Steam API is disabled. No, it's not. Liar. You're lying to me, output log. I know better. I know the shit's working. I know it's not disabled, you son of a bitch. Hurry up and finish playing with your packages. Twiddling my thumbs here. And again, it says Steam API disabled. Oh no. It's not disabled. Alright, just about done. There we go. Build successful. So there's just really nothing in here, so gonna minimize that. Now, like I said, if you're gonna package like that. Seriously, it's gonna package it in a Windows No Editor folder. Open that folder, grab everything that's in that folder, drag it back to the root folder that you, you got it in for the name of the project, and then get rid of that damn Windows No Editor folder. It's not gonna affect anything, but when you unzip it, you can see that it is it is what it is. You know what's there. Now, if you haven't run this project before, it's gonna ask you if you wanna allow it to go through the firewall. Yes promise you I'm far too lazy to make anything that would resemble a virus single player Shh, man it loads faster than hell um, bang go to the loft go over here sit down on the chair get your ass up go back over here go back to the lobby go to room one turn red lovely go back to the lobby turn white Go back to the main menu, host a multiplayer, you're yellow because you're the host. Go into your combat room, you're red, yay. Go back to the lobby, you're yellow again, sweet. Go back to the main menu, go into single player, you're white again because you're not a host. Lovely, amazing, super, awesome, right click add to stream party so actually cancel because I've already saved it underneath that I need to delete the old version of the RAR file it's 120 megabytes in its current format and probably most of that is because of the fact that well it's standalone it's not that horrible, but it's got all the necessities for running in, in Steam. Then part of the plugins and stuff like that is what's actually making it larger. If it didn't have that stuff in there, then it'd probably be like 50 mags or less. So, there we go. Stream party is saved. And I will... 120 megabytes. Very good. I'm going to go ahead and get out of this stream. I'm going to upload this. And if anybody wants to test with me, let me know on Discord. And um, I'll make sure I put the link down. Alright guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you around.